thank you so much ma'am it's amazing actually like it's, it's, it's a great way of uh, introducing to the story and about a forbidden love and it's yet another story expressing that love doesn't have any limitations or restrictions in mind correct correct yes yes so that's that's so beautifully explained ma'am like we all want to read yeah. that thank you so much thank you so much okay yeah. and we have our next speaker uh, sandhya ma'am like uh, the the, uh, like, the uh, fame like we love that book uh, we, each one of us who read that book we love that book for, uh, for any reason that's called uh, that's love story by eric segel and uh, we can't uh, wait more to know about that book from sandhya ma'am sandhya ma'am please go ahead Yes, ma'am. Your voice can't be heard. We can't hear you, ma'am. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um. Hi, everybody. I'm Sandhya, and uh, I'm sure most of us have read the book, and most of us are familiar with the characters, the storyline. Uh, has anybody not read the book? Okay, I do see. Okay, so then I can. Uh, tell you whatever i want and you won't know better <laughs> but anyway so uh, this is a very famous i think when you say romance to me this was the first book that uh, occurred to me not that there are uh, the other books that were presented were equally fabulous i've read most of them but for me this remains the ultimate book uh, in romance for more than one reason a little about the background of this book this was originally a screenplay it was going to be made into a movie in 1970 and the producers paramount pictures they wanted the uh, script writer eric segal to make a novel as a publicity effort and believe it or not this was released on valentine's day 1970 it went on to stay on the new york best sellers list for 41 weeks after which this movie was released in december of 1970 and it was a major runaway success so while i was preparing to present the book i didn't know where to start because there's so many aspects to this movie and each better than the other so i'll start with the first line of the book which says what do you say about a girl that died at 25 so this sounds like a horribly tragic uh, story but no love story is purely good there are some ups and downs in every story and so uh, very much so for uh, love stories so this is the story about two uh, students who meet at harvard there is a jenny who studies uh, at radcliffe at the uh, it's a liberal arts college and there is uh, uh, that's played by ali magro in the movie and ryan o'neil who plays uh, the hero he uh, studies at harvard he's a titled guy oliver barrett the fourth and uh, normally they are from both both sides of the track so they would never have met except they met at the library in college and i think the most beautiful aspect of this movie are the dialogues the conversations that uh, jenny and uh, oliver have they are so true they are so uh, the comfort between them i think for me romance is when you can be yourself you don't have to put on an act and that's what they brought out in each other they could just be themselves they didn't have to pretend they didn't have to be someone else they didn't have to impress and in fact the funny part of this book is you know oliver is titled he comes from a very fancy background he's used to people kowtowing to him all the time he's recognized because he features in magazines and this girl when she first meets him she doesn't give a hoot for who he is she calls him preppy 
and uh, you know she's always trying to put him down and he is so unused to that and uh, like uh, in all all of these privileged backgrounds there's always a bit of an issue that he has with his dad because he has to live up to reputations of generations of barrets who have done wonderfully well in studies and uh, who have so much of expectation from him and at one point of course they eventually fall in love and then uh, he takes her to his house the father treats her very badly he almost dismisses her kind of thing you know very uh, rude and then when they come out she asks him is this why you want to marry me just to spite your dad and then uh, of course that's not the reason he genuinely loves her and then uh, because he wants to marry her the family disowns him they go through a struggle and uh, it it's the story is very simple like uh, i can't see the, okay yeah uh, so the story is simple they go through hard times the family the sons and so she works while he finishes his law uh, college then he gets a good job and uh, then when they are trying to have children they can't have children and uh, that's when they go to a doctor and the doctor tells oliver that she is dying and oliver very nicely pretends to her for a long time that all is well and that's what kills him trying he doesn't have the luxury of feeling sad because he's trying to keep her happy eventually she gets to know and uh, it is that it's conversation that different levels that they have uh, he calls his dad sir she calls her dad by his first name so they are from totally different backgrounds and how she teaches him to chill a bit and she learns a bit of sophistication being herself is the highlight of the book and uh, for me i think the conversations i i wouldn't want to give you too many of the dialogues because they are so sweet they are full of love they are full of caring they are full of understanding so while supporting each other you still have the luxury of being yourself i think that is the biggest takeaway in any love story if you can support your loved one and still be yourself you know some most of the times people change people you know pretend to be somebody else because they don't want to hurt the other person but true love is when you can say whatever you want and still not be misunderstood so this is a epic book and uh, oliver has a very uh, like i mentioned he has a very disturbed uh, relationship with his father and like the first line of the book the last line of the book has always stayed with me the father of course eventually gets to know that jennifer is dying he comes over by which time jenny's already died and then oliver doesn't want to talk to him but he still goes after his son and then it says he had done something he had never done before he cried on the shoulders of his father so that's where the book ends and it takes you on a whole roller coaster of emotions while you're reading it and uh, uh, the title theme of this i was trying to play that but my mic did not cooperate in the beginning <laughs> i was trying to play the music for you all uh, that was uh, the theme music is also very well known that's love story and i think it's a book that has to be experienced uh, i'm sure i did not do justice to it because it's such a fabulous story and it's only when you read it you will understand thanks somewhere <laughs> thanks love uh, uh